Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. No, this isn't an in the field video. This is me chatting about how we can make Canon cameras even better in 2024. So I've been shooting Canon for 13 years. I love Canon. I'm very happy with it, but there's always room for improvement. And I thought I'd just talk about maybe the five, six, seven major features that I want to see in the R5 Mark II, the R1, the R7 Mark II that would just make our experience even better. So that's what today's video is about. I'm doing it in the field because this is my happy place and <laughs> this is where I love using these cameras and I'll just talk you through the different features that I'm looking for. But before I chat about the features, I want to share a photo that I just took. So Canon R5, 200-800, cormorant in a tree, backlit, sun coming up, and we've got these beautiful rays coming behind the tree. I would have liked more birds or maybe a cockatoo or something, but I just like how unique and different it looks. So <laughs> a great start to the morning. Anyway, we're not here to chat about photos and take photos. We're here to talk about Canon cameras. So let's do that. Okay, let's start with the most requested feature and the most important for wildlife, in my opinion, is a fully functioning pre-capture system. Now Olympus have been singing the praises of pre-capture for a long time and I didn't understand how important it was until I used the OM-1 and then more recently the Sony A9 III. Having a functioning pre-capture is game-changing. It allows you to capture shots that you would have missed before because your reaction time's too slow. Let's say you've got a second pre-capture on your camera. You're looking at a bird, you're looking at a bird, you're focusing on it and then it flaps its wings and you miss it you hit the shutter, but because you are pre-capturing, you capture all those images that previously wouldn't have taken. And it's just gonna mean you're not gonna miss as many shots. So we need to have it. Some of you are probably going, Dwayne, can it have pre-capture? And yes, they do, but it's so poorly implemented that I simply don't use it. What am I talking about? Well, on Canon, when you have pre-capture enabled, you get 0.5 of a second pre-capture. And that's it, you don't have a choice. You can't change it. So that's the first issue. We need to be able to change that. Second thing is that they roll all of the pre-capture images into a separate file, like a, a zip file. You can't get access until you use, I think, Canon's own software and you need to extract those raw files later on. It doesn't record individual raw files to your memory card and that is such a pain, it's just ridiculous. The next issue is, is that you can't take another photo until the buffer is cleared and it's created this different file. You're in the field, you see a subject, you start taking some photos, start taking photos, let your finger off the shutter, it starts creating this separate file type and you think, oh, I'll take another photo, and eh, you can't. You've got to wait for the camera to create this special file, clear the buffer, and then you can start shooting again. All right, so what I think is going on is Canon have an issue with their buffer. That is their reading and writing to their buffer. Why do I say that? Well, I've got the Canon R7 here. When I hit the buffer, Let's see what happens. So uh, looking at a subject, we take a photo, hit the buffer, I'm holding down the shutter and there's no photos. It can't take photos when the buffer's full. You've got to wait for a few seconds and then you can take photos. <laughs> and that's really annoying. If you've ever been in the field and you're tracking something, you're taking photos, you hit the buffer and the camera refuses to take photos, you often miss shots and it's really annoying and especially on cameras that don't have big buffers like the R7. It wasn't until I used some other brands like Sony, Olympus, etc., that I was shocked to discover that their cameras didn't do that. What their cameras did instead was just reduce the frame rate. So you start at a high frame rate, and when the buffer's getting close to full, they just simply drop the frame rate down, but you can still take photos at that lower frame rate, so you'd never miss a shot. And I thought, how good is this? It's genius. So. Why Canon can't do that, I don't know. And maybe this is related to the buffer clearing thing on the pre-capture as well. Not sure. At the end of the day, Canon, please fix this. We should be able to take photos when you're getting close to the buffer. Just leave an allowance in the overhead of the camera that it can read and write at the same time. And the other thing is, why don't they just increase the size of the internal memory of these cameras? And I don't know why they can't. Maybe someone in the comments can let me know. And the reason I say this is they're giving us these bodies like the R7 that can do 30 frames per second, the R6 40 frames, the Sony 120 frames. If we can only shoot for a second at those high frame rates, it reduces the usability of that feature. So ideally we need much bigger internal buffers. The third feature I would love to see is an improved bird detection autofocus system. At the moment they work really well, like the focus can track subjects and you can see it in this little black fronted dot rule. The camera is tracking that bird without an issue. So overall I'm very pleased with the autofocus. However, sometimes 
they get it wrong and they get confused. If you've used mirrorless, I'm sure your camera has locked onto a branch, onto the grass, onto water. It's locked onto the background and it's extremely annoying when that happens. We have to use manual focus to override, shoot at the ground, come back up. You know, we've got to get around it when the camera gets it wrong. It should be a setting that tells the camera don't stop autofocusing or hunting until you find the subject. If I'm pointing at a tree because there's a bird in it, the camera should be able to find it. It shouldn't lock onto a background, it shouldn't lock onto a branch, it should be smart enough to know that a tree branch is not a bird, so I need to keep looking. What I want it to do is stop focusing on the wrong thing. And I think we've got a point that they should be smart enough now that if there's a bird in the frame, it should be able to find it. So that's what I'm hoping. Uh, whether that will happen, I don't know, but that's the logical next step. And the other thing with autofocus is I would like it to be even stickier. That is, once it finds the subject, I want it to stick to it like glue, no matter what it does, and just track it without losing it or without then jumping to the background or jumping to a foreground. I'd love it to be able to, okay, that's the subject. Now let's just stick to it. And as I move around, it does it. They do a pretty good job, but I just like to see it even better. Oh, <laughs> there's some kangaroos. There's some kangaroos. <laughs> I don't think they knew I was here and they've just come bouncing through. Uh, I'm not sure if we got a shot or not, but <laughs> it's always fun to see them bouncing around, that's for sure. All right, so what's the next feature I want to see? I want to see large 45 megapixel stacked sensors from Canon. Currently, all we've got is the 24 megapixel stack sensor in the R3. I would love it on the R5 Mark II, the R1, the R7 Mark II. Why do I want these stack sensors? It just means it reads the data way, way quicker, which leads to better autofocus and less rolling shutter. With our slow readout speeds on say the R7, the R, and some of the older Canon cameras, as we get this warping and this weird look in our images, the wobbles and the warps is one of my biggest complaints with the R7. It just sort of ruins too many photos. Yes, you get plenty of good ones, but we shouldn't have to deal with that now. So a stack sensor will eliminate that issue. So fingers crossed we get that. All right, I'll move to a new location. So I was just driving down the road and I spotted this golden headed cesticular on this uh, branch here. So it's sitting there. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> oh, I can see them flying around, which is great. The next feature I would love is adjustable FPS. What do I mean by that? I would love us, so us users can choose 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, whatever we want to whatever suits our style. Instead of the camera being restricted to say just 20 or 10 or whatever it is, I love that flexibility. The other feature I would absolutely love is a speed boost button like they have on the Sony A9 III. So I'd love some additional buttons on front of the camera. How it works is you set your base frame rate, say you only want 10 frames per second because 20 or 30 is just way too many. Well, you can then allocate a higher frame rate to a button and when you want it, you just hold it down. So we could be shooting at 10 frames per second, all action, hold it down, and we can jump up to 40 or whatever it might be. That is really, really cool, and I love that feature. So Canon, I'd love a speed boost option. There's a white-fronted chat. Oh, <laughs> it blew down. There's quite a few birds here, which is cool. Oh, the white-fronted chat's back up. All right, so... <laughs> We did manage to get a shot of a white front of chat, but it was a little bit far away. But the uh, reach of this, so we've got 800 millimeters, so it just makes that subject a bit bigger. Even when it was far away, we still got a shot. So that was cool. Alrighty, so what would have really helped me when I was photographing those white fronted chats would be zebras and stills. What are we talking about zebras and stills? Basically, I want to highlight overexposure warning in the viewfinder. So when we are looking at the white front of chat in the viewfinder, if I make those whites too bright, I want the camera to tell me. And if you've ever shot on Sony or Olympus or any of these other brands, it does that. So when you have your overexposure warning, that will start flashing like these black and white lines and it tells you that that part of whites are too bright. So you just change your exposure, make your image a little bit darker and then you can't blow the whites. It's very hard to blow the whites when you've got zebras and stills. 
Canon give us zebras in video, but we haven't got them in stills. So Canon, please give us zebras in stills. And if you're gonna do that, you might as well let us choose the color of the warning as well. Maybe you could have an orange or a red or whatever color, so we can easily see it in the viewfinder when we're overexposing the whites. Unfortunately, my audio died, so it's the next day, I'm filming at home, and I've only got a couple of features to go. The next feature is dual CF Express B cards. It's about time we got rid of SD cards. They're too slow. Most people have CF Express B cards now, so having two of them will enable us to record that data much quicker, and it just makes a lot of sense. So fingers crossed we get that. The next feature that was heavily requested by my members is to have built-in GPS in the R5 Mark II. So the R3 has it, but the R5 doesn't. People love to record where they are when they take the photos, and I fully understand that. So fingers crossed we get GPS in the R5 II, the R7 Mark II, etc. Okay, so we've come to the end of the video. I'll just quickly recap the features I really want to see in 2024. Number one, working pre-capture. We have to have working pre-capture. It's just so important. The second one, Canon, improve your buffer. Don't let it have a hard stop. Let us continue taking photos and increase the buffer size. Third one, improve the bird detection AF. The camera shouldn't be focusing on branches when we've got bird eye enabled, especially when you can see the bird in the frame. So please improve that. We want 45 megapixel stack sensors or bigger. Definitely need the stack sensors to reduce the rolling shutter and improve the AF. We also want adjustable FPS. Let us choose what FPS we want and give us a speed boost button. That would be fantastic. Next is zebras and stills, as I already mentioned. That's really, really important for me shooting so I don't blow my whites. Dual CF Express B cards and inbuilt GPS. I think that's it. Let me know in the comments what you want to see in 2024. What did I miss? What do you think is really, really important? This has been a bit of fun. I'm confident Canon will implement some of these. Maybe we'll check back at a later date. But the R5 is not far away. The R1, not far away as well. So I'm extremely excited about what's coming in 2024. Again, thank you to, for the support. Thanks to all the new members, the existing members. If you're not aware, for less than the price of a cup of coffee per month, you directly support me and enables me to make videos like this. So until the next one, happy birding. Take care. See you later.